Hi, everyone. So I'm very honored to be uh, involved with this uh, CREATE Symposium. And then let me introduce the uh, Professor uh, Asaf. Asaf? Hello, everybody. All right, very good. So we were going to give you a talk next 30 minutes. It's going to be very informative, uh, very exciting uh, topic about cellular agriculture. The title of our talk is the Bioengineering Tool for Next Generation Cellular Agriculture from the definition of, and then we will alternatively give a, a talk at the end of the, this 30 minute talk, we're gonna have a, a question too. Okay, I will start from this conversation is what is a cell act? What is the definition of a cellular agriculture? Which is uh, cellular agriculture is for the people, for the animal, and for the world. The definition of a cellular agriculture is basically cut out the waste of animal agriculture by harvesting real animal product directly from the cell. And then there is, of course, two different ways. One is the tissue engineering way, growing animal cell outside the animal, isolate, feed, specify, harvest. Alternatively, we have a, a fermentation way, which is using microorganism to obtain the protein in animal product, introduce, basically feed, purify, harvest. So this is the basically the, the whole structure scheme of the cell act in short. So cellular agriculture trends, and the, which is leading by the uh, basically Singapore and Israel. And 2040, if we see the statistic global meat consumption, will be increasing about 41% the cultured meat, 9% is plant-based meat, and decreasing conventional meat production because we want to have a sustainable agriculture, have to have a commercially potential and driven by the food science and technology. With that in Singapore, it's announced and approved the first lab grown meat production. And that is directly aligned with the 30 by 30 vision to grow enough food in Singapore to meet 30% of our nutri uh, nutritional needs by 2030. And trend in Singapore is excellent food tech ecosystem they are keep developing. Therefore, Singapore is the food tech hub of Asia, including ag tech. They grow the ag tech pioneer to example company involved with the CAMCO and Sustainer. And food science and technology is the leading part of the uh, Singapore uh, AIM, uh, health and environmental concern, which is the shark meat, a cell-based clean meat company, and total tree lab using cell-based process to create clean milk, which is both companies involved with this proposal. And also robot enabled food service is potentially possible on um, future of the robotics and food delivery system is also capable in here in Singapore. And what about the Israel? It's our counterpart in the Hebrew University, the world leading innovator in food science and technology, especially for the lab grown meat factory opening in Israel for the first time. And as you all know, vibrant startup scene happening in Israel and lead by the technology in Hebrew University. So next few slides, Asaf gonna give you a talk. Start from the challenges in cellular agriculture. Asaf. So thank you. If we are looking at the problems and the challenges in uh, making cellular ag agriculture um, wide and uh, common uh, industry, we are looking at uh, um, antibiotic resistant bacteria, first of all, 
And pathogens in general, we have viral contaminations, we have uh, resistant bacteria, and if we want to progress this industry, we must uh, tackle these challenges at two levels. Uh, we need good sensing of uh, what's going on, and then we need mitigation strategies in order to fight it. Uh, next slide, please. So what we are aiming to do in our project is to develop advanced bioengineering tools to support this next generation cellular agriculture by overcoming the challenges of microbial threats. And uh, this will be um, accompanied by creating a platform for academia industry collaboration uh, about these important topics, which will be implemented in industry. So we have a very close collaboration with industry in Singapore and in Israel and the cellular agriculture industry. And the bioengineering tools we will develop will be for food safety and quality control of the cell uh, industry. And the, the next generation antimicrobials, which will work in non-classical antibiotic uh, mechanisms and will be the solutions for these uh, problems. So uh, next slide. And uh, you can see here uh, the vision of our program and uh, our initiative will be a world leading initiative that will be focused on two parts. First one is biosensors to sense um, uh, uh, bacteria or viruses at very, very low levels um, within the, the cells that are grown. And then to mitigate in order to prevent the microbial uh, contaminations in the laboratory grown food. So, we are going to develop several tracks of research. And um, the first one will be antimicrobial mitigation in a non-antibiotic way. It will not work like the classical antibiotics. And um, this will be accompanied by biosensing tools because we will have, first of all, to sense um, uh, where we have the contaminations and which contaminations we have, and then um, mitigate. And the third part is to develop a non-animal scaffolds uh, for growing um, uh, the uh, uh, lab grown uh, food. So in the next slide. So with that, with that vision of those sophisticated uh, program vision we can develop, we are able to do it in Singapore because we can have a triple helix synergies. Those program interact based on the, this model, academia, industry, and with the government support. In academia, in this particular case, NTU and NUS directly partnership with the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and then also collaboration with the known as the Samsung University SKKU in Korea partnership. And then also those industry, including the Hebrew Israel's red meat, red redefined meat, shark meat, and then also ARPA farm and the turtle tree in Israel and Singapore company. And government agency, we are working with the Singapore Food Agency, also ASTAR to provide the guidance of the regulatory and also fundamental research too. That under the umbrella of the create and then share program. And then that's the house of this whole program is happening. And with the global benchmarking, the existing initiative focused on the production method and processes, so in our case, share cell as this is the world the first example to develop anti uh, microbial solution and biosensor development. So this is beyond the conventional antibiotic solution we are providing. Plan to do that. So this world-class collaboration is possible because we have an existing NTN Hebrew University, the ultra-fast strategy to developing the new non-antibiotic antimicrobial uh, agent development, as well as NUS Hebrew University's development in situ diagnostic and treatment for improving cell uh, pro food production. And that, that is under the umbrella of the SHARE program to join experts from the Hebrew and NTU and US, and then along with the industry partnership, we'll draft and advise to cooperate to develop technology in the pipeline. With that, those industrial partnership 
they raised over $170 million. And then recent news, you may heard from the Turtle Tree raised $30 million in Series A to expedite full commercialization of the cell-based milk. Alpha Farm raised $105 million to start selling beef in 22. So this whole field is moving very fast. And then we have the supporting system to basically research along with those industrial partners. And the significance of industrial partnership is basically solving real problems. They generate the bioengineering tool that can directly apply to solve outstanding problems in the industry. Also technology transfer, formalized technology transfer agreement and secure license through the various mitigation tool and sensor. And then manpower development is a very important thing in order to have the industry sustainably empowered. So we need to create the manpower development training platform to support growth of the cellular agriculture industry in Singapore. And then those along those things possible with a strong Singapore-Israel link. As that, and then me are the program leader of this whole team structure. We have a regulatory partner from the government, Singapore Food Agency. Also, they have an industry partner. We have uh, around 10 plus principal investigator, expert within the biology, biosensor, engineering, science expertise, with a strong administration support by the share. Assess. So now let's uh, show you the program, the planned program activities and uh, what are the scientific tracks that uh, we are taking. Our research will be divided into two main tracks. The first one will be to develop non-antibiotic antimicrobial strategies that will work in a non-classical mechanism so that resistance could not be developed. And the big challenges here that uh, the antibiotics um, are, are not good for the mitigation strategies within the cellular agriculture industry and uh, you expect everything to be completely sterile. There are also the risk of viruses, and we will develop next generation antimicrobials that will stop the microbial pathogens and will have no risk of developing resistance, which is very, very important here. The second track will be online real-time biosensors for monitoring the production and the, the challenges today are that the production is really expensive and the sensors are with low sensitivity and are usually offline, so you get limited feedback. And we aim to develop online sensors that will detect ultra-low uh, microbial uh, buildup, we will detect the viruses or bacteria at very, very low levels, and immediately and automatically implement the mitigation strategies to prevent a uh, uh, microbial uh, risk. So in the next slide, and we can uh, get a look into the specific projects in both tracks. Um, in track one, we will start by designing the specific uh, compounds and uh, the antimicrobial compounds. We will design them, we will make them, and we will characterize compounds based on lipids, on peptides, on glycans, and uh, this will be the, the mitigant. And uh, in the, the second uh, project, we will develop targeted mitigants for specific pathogens. We will have a continuous cross talk with industry to identify the most important pathogens in real life, uh, the most important problems of the industry, and then develop uh, targeted mitigants against these pathogens. Then we will evaluate the mitigants in production relevant matrices and environmental condition conditions. Again, so it will be industry relevant. That's the most important thing. It will be a real life thing that could be implemented um, uh, in the industry. Uh, the next project will be to, to test the mitigants in cultured food uh, scaffold systems, both 2D and 3D, uh, so that we could really implement it in uh, real life conditions. Then project five is actually moving us from the antimicrobial uh, strategies to the sensing strategies. And then we will use similar compounds, not only to mitigate, but also to sense and the bacterial proteins, this will be based on uh, interactions, and uh, we will uh, design these molecules for pathogen specific detection. And in the next slide, you could see uh, track two. Next slide, please. 
um, uh, in which we will use the, those compounds for developing the biosensors uh, for production monitoring. Um, so we will uh, design and assemble uh, ultra-sensitive electrochemical biosensors that will and, uh, develop real-time feedback loops. And then we could have controlled mitigant release uh, during uh, the production process when uh, you have a signal that something is wrong, the sensor identifies something, then immediately the mitigant could be released. This will be developed, we will integrate the online electrochemical biosensors into cultured food production systems, and we have to do the process modeling, we will have to develop, of course, testing standards again to make everything uh, compatible with industry, uh, so it could be really a translational thing towards uh, use in industry, and Another project, project number five in track two, is to develop novel scaffolds for cultured meat production that will be plant-based and then uh, and use them as well. In the next slide, we could see the overall innovation from the academic point of view. There will be some revolutionary key technological outcomes. And on the left, you could see um, uh, uh, the scheme of what we will do here. We will have a sensor array, uh, the sensing event will be translated into computer-controlled antimicrobial mitigation. And from the academic point of view, we will have novel mitigants that will be acceptable by the authorities uh, from the regulatory point of view, based on peptides, on lipids, on peptidoglycans. And we will have a library of peptides and peptidomimetics that target specifically the interactions of the pathogenic proteins. And this is how we will target the specific pathogens. And based on this, we will develop a systematic guide to suggest the most suitable mitigation strategy for each microbial contamination in different systems. And we will use the same or similar peptides, pedomimetics, PGOs, etc., for electrochemical sensing by um, anchoring them to surfaces and uh, then sensing the pathogens. In the next slide, we could see the innovation from the industry point of view, you can see here a scheme of the system with the real-time feedback loop. And this uh, controlled release mitigation technology is novel. You could have, as I said, very low concentration detection um, with the real-time feedback loops. And um, uh, we could, for example, start with detecting salmonella in soy production and then releasing antimicrobial peptides. This is just one example. Of course, there will be many examples. There will be an array of sensors, um, as we said. And uh, altogether, we aim to set industry standards in order to be able to use it at the end of the project for the cellular agriculture industry. And um, I'm John, now it's yours. So with that, we have a very strong industrial partner. Essentially, this is every partner in the uh, cell ag space, the most active one. The collaboration scope, we already defined. So with the, the shark meat, we define the R&D collaboration based on their invention of the seafood, antimacterial strategy, real-time biosensing, and also they want to have a plant and cell-based 3D scaffold system in order to have the Crantacin uh, product. And then those participation in the training of the expertise and the research Commercialization is basically we have to make the program together with them. And then Turtle Tree, they are starting contributing the uh, feeling, the idea and feedback on how our solution can be applied to the their product, in the big product, and then further industry. And then support prototype testing with a cell line and also process and share data and user feedback, which is a very important platform set up for our research platform development in Singapore. And also the industry partner in Israel, the collaboration score is a similar, but somewhat different in the sense that communication needs for the industry platform that relate with the cell biology and also processing development and food science and technology. And pilot plan can be served as a test site for evaluating 
project technologies we are aiming to develop. And then those collaboration scheme, scope, provide expertise, operation setup, application setup, and workflow for the technological evaluation is we we're gonna to develop together with the, or collaboration with the redefined mint. And those discuss applicative tests and assess of the equipment step and expertise, which is the invaluable resource we can have through the, this true industrial collaboration. So outcome and deliverable in this particular case, as I mentioned from the beginning, from the beginning talk, the define of the cell ag, which is a cellular agriculture, is for people, for animal, and for the world. This is the whole concept we we're gonna aiming to develop this one. For the people, healthy people through safer and perfectly monitored meat product without antibiotic or risk of a foodborne disease. That's for the people. For the animal, basically, respect for the animal life in producing animal product without any animal suffering. And the, finally, for the world, it's cultivating the sustainable future that reduce our use of the natural resource without asking for mass behavior changes, which that is the definition for the cell ag. And that we will follow this one with the world first global academic innovation platform. We're doing now with the Hebrew University, the core core partnership to solve biggest challenges in the food science and technology industry. And that they deliverable, it's a very clear goal we define, scientific paper and article, technological disclosure, and then IP, because we work with the industry, core industry group, we are able to transfer technology. And then most importantly, we provide the tool, educate the manpower for Singapore cell ag industry. Many students tap transit to the local cell ag related companies, create the academic industry government consortium, which is triple helix model we will apply in here, directly support cell ag research and education. And that we will talk to local institute right now organize an outreach program for this very exciting new industry innovation for the cell ag industry, over 200 local students annually. That's what we want to do. And with that, that we believe it is complementing the 30 by 30 vision from Singapore, engage with the food science Singapore Food Agency, we establishing the standard through the consultation with the industry partnership as well as the Singapore Food Agency, set of industry standards for the pathogen test for cultured food production and industry translation. This triple helix formation of the consortium for cellular agriculture between academia, industry, and government body, which is very unique most therefore facilitating communication, we initiate expertise the establish of the guideline, regulation, and standard. That is our goal of complementing this 30 by 30 vision. So summary and outlook. We have a very, very distinct deliverable and distinct goal for this whole proposal and partnership with the Hebrew University. Translation focus. This program, unlike other programs, have a very strong translation focus to provide feedback for the research back to resource to address major industry need in cellular agriculture space and defining definition out of it. And the world-class team, as I explained, 
with the actor in Singapore, as well as Hebrew University, with the industry top leader. This comprehensive team structure, combining world-class academic researcher, industrial collaboration provides strong competency to achieve the translation objective. And then there definitely is a future opportunity happening in Singapore. As the research program advanced, we envision that there is a lot of additional research collaboration opportunity, other research initiative in Singapore leading this whole field of uh, cell act by expanding science and technology development in here in Singapore. So thank you very much for your attention. We will have a question. We have a, a 10 different project appendix. If you need detailed information and detailed data, we can answer the question with ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof Cho and Prof Rita. Uh, so for Q&A, uh, we actually have one question in the Q&A box. Uh, it's actually directed to Prof Cho. Uh, could you please comment on why fatty acids and monoglycerides are interesting molecules for cell act as non-antibiotic alternatives? That's an uh, excellent question. So actually, the uh, we are working on the non-antibiotic development. Antibacterial resistance is basically when bacteria is exposed to this antibiotic or small molecule that specifically target them, and some bacteria dies, but resistance happens. So in this particular case, the question about the lipid peptide glycan-based molecule, it's uh, uh, from the other food. And for the agricultural sector, it's uh, very cheap. They have uh, no resistance and have a high antibacterial effectiveness. So that we can actually using this uh, very sustainable material for the antibiotic agents. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Lim, you have a question too? Yes, uh, thanks, Michelle, and thank you, Professor Cho and, and uh, Professor Fridla. Uh, two questions. Uh, one is you referred in your presentation to uh, strong uh, investor interest in, in this field. And my first question is, uh, given this strong investor interest and what we have seen about the millions of dollars being poured into this space, uh, where do you see publicly funded research uh, playing a role in this, right? Because it, we are we're talking about a program that's going to take uh, 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 four or five years to, 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 to deliver outcomes. And, and they, uh, meanwhile, these hundreds of millions of dollars are pouring in. So that's my first question. My second question is this. Uh, you will be aware that outside agriculture, the challenges of uh, cell manufacturing, right? Growing human cells for therapeutic purposes and so on, uh, it's you know, uh, uh, enormous amount of research going into that. So from the science point of view, what really is the difference between the, the techniques uh, that will be developed in that domain and, and, and uh, what uh, is or is not applicable to the agricultural uh, animal cells uh, type domain? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Asaf, do you want to answer or do you want me to answer this one? Oh, please go ahead. It's a... All right, Dr. Lim, this is an excellent question and then very, very important question. You hit the point. As you just mentioned, we almost coined the name, this cell ag is for the first time actually. And this is basically emerging technology development that people are crazy about, All right? And then as I mentioned, when I explained of the cell ag, this is for the people, for the animal, for the human. So a lot of the investment money is pouring into this area. Replace the protein, sustainable meat, it's a plant meat-based, cell meat-based. And then your question is, because of this huge money pouring in from the industry, why the government and research institution pour the money to support, aligning with? Because when I talk to this industry partnership, I have a very one question because we know the cell culture process, and then we using when we culture the cell in the uh, scalable fashion, and even small scale, we using a lot of antibiotics. 
And then I ask one question to the industry. Where this antibiotic goes? I mean, you guys culture the meat from the, from the cell level, and then you basically produce the meat. Where is the, those antibiotic goes? And that was a very simple conversation when I designed this whole project. Because with. That's why there is no standard developed and there is a, a what kind of a pathogen or, or various pathogen is uh, in place to basically tackle or exam. And then also the standard protocol for the research and science is not developed yet. So we believe the, the government agency, research government agency put the funding, that's gonna be the leader to make the standard with the, with the industrial partner which this industry partner, you see that that's all the first generation industry partner. We are all working together. I believe this is very, very important. Okay, what was the second question? Uh, how, how, how is the science for cell act uh, different uh, from that for cell manufacturing for human therapeutics? Because they don't use antibiotics either. So, so that, that's a strong body of work going on. In fact, there is an ongoing CREATE program uh, that is, that is uh, uh, working on that. Uh, and so what's the difference? What, so what in, our, in our strengths, as far as I understand, in our strengths, we develop non-traditional antibiotic agent system as well as uh, directly simultaneous continuous monitoring system from the biosensor electrochemistry fashion. That's our strength over conventional, the Dr. Lim, you mentioned the program. Asaf, do you want to add something? Yeah, the basic science is of course general. So once you have non-antibiotic non uh, mitigants and, and such compounds, or you have biosensors, the technology could be applied later by others for every purpose. Basically we create here, a big bunch of basic science results that will be very, very useful way beyond the, the cell hug industry in the end. Um, so this is the, the strong basic science component of the, of the program. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have another two more questions from the Q&A box. Uh, the first one is slightly related to Dr. Lim's first question. Uh, the attendee asked, could you please discuss how this program can train, can help train people for cell act in Singapore? And do you see a big need from the industry partners? So that's also an excellent question. I mean, you know, for example, this is the emerging industry area. Cell agriculture is going to be emerging one, including with the food science and technology. Definitely we need a, a manpower that educated by analytical chemistry, how they actually define the pathogen and the very detailed engineering and science and technology equipped by. And then we want to provide those manpower activities through the whole this program, which is very much necessary. And then the second question, why this is important with the industry cooperation? Because now this is emerging field as the Dr. Lim also mentioned, lots of money investor money is investing to increasing production of the plant-based and cell-based meat production. However, there is no standard tool, no standard regulation. It's defined by the globally adopted, which is the, our platform. One of the goal is basically we employ, we test, we make the standard tool to carry on this, so in order to do that, we need to know the problem from the industry. This is the first generation companies. And then we actually work that they agree with to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Cho. So uh, I'll go on to the last question in the Q&A box. Uh, well, actually there are two. Okay, I'll go on to the first one first. Um, the person comments that from what he sees, uh, the world seems to have gone down the route of plant-based meat quite rapidly, including Impossible Meat, Beyond Meat, being brands that have been quickly adopted by many restaurants in Singapore over the last few years. Uh, this attendee is curious to know what advantages cellular agri-meat would have over plant-based meat, and will it really overtake plant-based meat as per your projection slide, or rather, what are the reasons it has not already? 
I mean, this is another excellent question, I believe, from the audience and then saying that, hey, Plan B was very popular in a for a moment, then suddenly it uh, seems to me disappear. This is not a disappear. The trend will be go. And then let me put it this way. Eight years ago, eight years ago, we wrote a paper about infectious disease, the BUCA concept, and then we keep pushing that, hey, we need to develop broad spectrum antivirus therapy. If government support for those antiviral therapy infectious disease eight years ago, we may not have a problem with the COVID-19 now. And this environmental issue, and this is this, uh, uh, the, the whole movement, wave of uh, stop using plastic, agriculture, climate change. This topic is, we are just beginning. So I believe this is not the trendy one, like other technology. This is the emerging technology we have to study from the fundamental, develop the regulatory fundamental technology. Then we need to actually capture leading this whole field. Asaf, do you have any other further comments for them? No, I think you answered it excellent. So. Hey, thank you. Uh, one last question for Prof Cho. Uh, could you please elaborate the extent of working together with your industry partners? And what does it transpire? Uh, testing, sample test, uh, sample sharing, feedback consultation, or anything else? So basically, we need to know the, what is the problem in the industry. And then it's happened. Usually, they don't actually open without those collaboration level. And then we got a first-hand problem and experience from the industry. And then we are by engineer, by definition, is so we have a solution to solve such a problem. That's the first line engagement. Second, they want to have an analytical tool to monitor and test. And then which we can align with the industry needs and necessity we develop. With that, we automatically educating whole manpower system for cellular agriculture. Once we define those standards, we believe Singapore will be the hub for the food technology science. Thank you.